morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, as you know, we had technical difficulties uh, internationally, and they have come locally as well. So today we are not live streaming, uh, but we are old school recording, so that's why the laptop is over there, uh, and you might see yourself um, as you go past uh, for communion. We will edit it uh, after the fact uh, today, and we'll get that sent out um, as soon as we possibly can through email. So if anyone says, I couldn't get on live stream, just say, yeah, that international glitch, it happens here. So thanks for the grace. Uh, just want to remind you, if you want to let us know that you're here, you can sign in using the QR code that's on the front of your bulletin. If you have a prayer request, you can uh, fill that out as well. QR code uh, form, and also we have the welcome cards and the key racks uh, where you can do the same. When the offering plates are uh, passed later in the service, you can uh, place your uh, welcome card in the offering plate at that time. This morning we have um, our two uh, national youth gathering participants, uh, Matthew Duffier and our uh, director of faith formation, Julia Glassy who will be sharing reflections from uh, their week. They just got home last night uh, after a full week in New Orleans with 18,000 other uh, students and caring adults uh, being immersed in uh, faith uh, through all kinds of activities. So we are going to be hearing from them later in the service and um, that will be great. So I invite you all now to please stand and turn to page two for our litany of summer worship. I invite you uh, to uh, join me responsibly. And we begin. On the Galilean road, Jesus stopped to reflect and pray. We too long for rest and long for our souls. Seeing those in need, Jesus healed, taught, and fed. We are called to live as servants, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Holding the children close, Jesus blessed them. For to such as these, the kingdom of heaven belongs. On the road to Bethlehem, the true light came into the world, and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. Amen. And we sing together our gathering hymn, You Are Holy.
Together, let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. And we continue with children's message. So um, this month, as we talk about uh, travel, worship, travel, play has been our um, three-month series for the summer worship. Um, we've talked about different things that we bring on our journeys. And today, I brought my water bottle that I use every day. I carry this thing everywhere with me. I love it. <laughs> because it keeps me hydrated. How many glasses of water are we supposed to have a day? I, I don't know, like eight, eight glasses of water. Um, and that's a lot, you have to really work at that. And so uh, children, uh, as you hear this message, it's important for you to drink water as well. And sometimes children, you need to inspire and encourage your parents, your grandparents, those adults in your life, are you drinking enough water? Are you staying hydrated? And spiritually, this nourishes our bodies. Um, Jesus went to the well uh, to ask for water from um, a woman who was at the well. Uh, even Jesus needed water. He got tired and thirsty. We get tired and thirsty. We need water on our travels. So this week when you are hydrating, which I hope you are, uh, as it hopefully will cool off a little bit this week, but still hydrate, I want you to think about how water is a blessing for our lives. And it's also rooted in our baptismal promises. We remember when the water passes over our heads and the, the cross of Christ is placed on our foreheads that we belong to God, we are children of God. And water has that symbolism and that power to remind us. So keep carrying your water bottle. Love it. Stay hydrated. God loves you and I do too. You, 
are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your works, good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ.
but honestly, I'm not sure if we actually have a final count, but it might be somewhere between 16,000 and 18,000 because people were coming and going. People came to an earlier activity, um, which I will be talking about later. So we were from all over the US. I'm pretty sure most states were represented. We also had a group from Puerto Rico. We had um, people from Alaska and Hawaii, and you think about their journey. I mean, ours was pretty brutal, but theirs, theirs is pretty uh, long as well. So it was hot. It was humid, tiring, and overstimulating at times. But we were created to be there this past week. Pictures, stories, words cannot even come close to our experience in New Orleans. But we can try our best to share with all of you our experiences. Students, leaders, and adult chaperones learned that we were created to be great, authentic, free, disruptive, and disciple. We walked a minimum of 15,000 steps a day. And we went to the Smoothie King Center for mass gatherings every evening with our fellow 16,000 other people. All at the same time, all going on the same thing. We heard stories from people in our greater ELCA community, worshiped with some fabulous musicians and bands, and heard of the way that Christ helped show up in these people's lives and reminded them that they were created to be. We serve at an elementary school just outside the city who will be welcoming students back for the school year in two weeks. We were created to be at that school. We helped paint outside, we did yard work, and helped refresh some of the bulletin boards. We were created to be servants in any community, not just in our home here in Seattle, Mercer Island, or even the greater Washington. They have to repaint every single year. I thought we got rain. I thought we were wet. No. New Orleans, when it rains, it pours. I mean, absolutely storm level, flood level pouring. And all their hard work that these people give to their school to get and ready for the playgrounds and the outdoor spaces, they have to paint every year. So they do have three people in their facilities team, but only three people can only do so much when it's hot, humid, wet. You can only do it in the morning. You also have all the other spaces to prepare. So they were absolutely beyond grateful that we were able to help them. This was a humbling experience for many of us, not just to leave the comfort of our homes and church, but to go to a state and city who has experienced so many things that we can't even imagine. Hurricane after hurricane, flood. Lived experiences of being a person of color in the South. Economic turbulence, violence, and more. We can now come back to our space and share the experiences of what we saw, heard, and did. We um, had a day where we did a goose chase, which is really just a giant scavenger hunt, and we were able and invited to um, interview a local. Well, when I go around Seattle and I ask, oh, um, you know, where are you from and what, um, what brought you here? A lot of people are not traditionally from Mercer Island, Seattle, Bellevue, or even Washington. We have a lot of trans fans here. I mean, what can I say? The state is pretty awesome. I have not personally left. <laughs> but for them, they stay here. They have locals everywhere. And I did not know that. So we happened to pop into um, my group, because we split up. We popped into a local candy store. And these kids didn't know um, how to start the conversation. Which, I mean, probably when I was 15, I didn't either. So, you know, I go up to um, the person who was behind the counter, 
in our last space. Um, we are a group um, of students here, and we are supposed to, we're doing a skeleton hunt because you can kind of tell who we are. We're all in matching shirts. Yes, I have the shirt that Matthew is wearing. Yes, a lot of people have the shirt that I'm wearing. Um, and so we're just moving through the city in hordes of colored, brightly um, groups. So we walked in, I said, we're doing a scavenger hunt. And little did I know, this person has um, been there their entire life. They were into construction and then something changed and then now they're making candy. So to me, that was a humbling experience to know that people don't necessarily move. They don't um, feel like they need to move or that maybe they're not able to. So I just thought that was a really humbling experience to hear that so many people come here, but a lot of places people can't even leave their home. So when you think about that, we were doing, um, we went to a large room in the convention center to do our interactive learning. The big reason why I'm wearing this shirt today is the ELTA has partnered and done so much in service and in sharing people's experience and how they can help and using our privilege to share that with others and make sure that people get what they need. There were two free events, one Smile, which was multicultural youth leadership event, and the other was Table, for our siblings in Christ who have a disability. The EOC work A does work very hard to make sure that all, and I mean all, people are seen, heard, experienced, and loved. Now, you go to every church, they do different things, they have pictures in their bulletin, they have digits, they um, record so that people can uh, watch it at home. There's something about when the ELCA gets together and does a huge event, I mean, everyone is seen, everyone's heard, everyone's loved and experienced and able to participate in the way that matches them. So I always feel excited to see that in action. So there were people on the main stage who were doors, windows, and mirrors to the people in the audience. Now, there was a lot of people from Minnesota. And if you know Minnesota, there's a lot of people who look like me. It's a lot of white, um, male, female, um, non-binary. But also, it's a lot of um, Lutherans are, were Scandinavian. We are, um, I'm trying to think of what else I am. I am a bunch of things that make me very European. Well, the ELCA is not only white, I have to say. When you are gathered together in a space, you really see our brothers and sisters and our siblings in Christ who are a person of color, who have a different lived experience than you. So for me, I like to use as a teacher the door, window, and mirror. Mirror is that you see people in the room or space that look like you, a reflection of you. There's a window so that you can look into other people's lives. And then I thought the gathering was a door, a space that we could go into another person's lived experience, another community, and live this through as a youth, a leader, a teacher, a pastor, and anyone else who was there. I will conclude with this, a blessing. Brave, authentic, free, and disruptive sibling, you've been created to use your voice, to be a presence of hope, to let your actions reveal the love of Christ throughout God's creation. May the blessing of God Almighty Creator and Redeemer and Sustainer send you forth to do amazing things as creative and faithful disciples. Amen. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able as we sing our song of the day, Awesome God.
with affirming our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Bible. One, in the communion of saints, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. For the Church of Jesus Christ, in this and every land, through the one who is the cornerstone of a firm foundation, join us together and build us up as a temple of mercy and peace. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For, the all, for all of creation, we pray for all environments under strain, especially those places that are really struggling with heat this summer. Bring ample rainfall, abundant sunlight, bless plantings and crops for food. As a shepherd tends their sheep, raise up from among us caretakers of all you have made. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and heads of tribes and peoples, we pray especially for peace. Where it seems far off, bring it near. Where justice seems fleeting, bring it to light. Where discord seems relentless, bring harmony. We pray for our own nation during our uh, election season. We pray for Ukraine. Gaza, Israel, Yemen, wherever there is violence and unrest among people, bring your peace. In your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. For the health and well-being of friends and family and neighbors, heal those who are ill. For Michael, David, Brian, Gordon, Althea, Eleanor, Chris, Mark, John, Eddie, for Nancy and family at the death of Michael, Sue and Don, and the family and friends of John Lee, and those whom we name now in the silence of our hearts. Give courage to all who struggle with addiction. Bless our ministry of Al-Anon Al that we host each Monday night. Touch with your tender care all who reach out to you in pain. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly and for the faith communities represented this week at the ELCA National Youth Gathering in New Orleans, we are grateful that Matthew and Julia were able to experience this amazing week and that they come home sharing their stories of faith with us. Nurture the faith of all young people as they encounter new experiences. Break down dividing walls and inspire collaboration among people of every age. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share being of peace with one another.
would share our offerings and our gifts to bless our community of faith and the greater world. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and upon us, we pray. Take, bless, break, and give us, that we might be your body in the world. After the meal had ended, you, Jesus, took the cup of wine. Again, you gave thanks and praise and gave the cup to your disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Send your Holy Spirit upon this cup and upon us, we pray. Take, bless, pour, and give us, that we might be your life flowing for the world. And we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. As our ushers make their way forward to dismiss us uh, to the table, we will dismiss uh, both sides uh, to come to the altar at the same time. Uh, piano side, you will make your way all the way to the end of the railing, and ramp side, you will begin here in the center and fold back towards, uh, towards the uh, ramp. Uh, here at Holy Trinity, we remember that this table is part of uh, God's table, and that everywhere there are Christians, uh, we celebrate this meal. And here at Holy Trinity, uh, along with uh, many ELCA congregations across our nation and the world, uh, we celebrate an open communion table where everyone uh, is invited to come and to taste and to see uh, and to remember Jesus. And just as uh, Julia reminded us today, when we come to this table, we remember that we are created to be exactly who we are, and that God loves us and accepts us and calls us to go into the world to be our unique, authentic selves uh, and to share our faith with whomever we meet. So let us come to this table and be nourished in this promise. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good.
may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And Julia has her announcement. Hello everyone, once again, um, just wanted to let you all know that the home care and hygiene kits are being put together. Um, there is a little display right out here in the narthex, right outside of the sanctuary doors, if you would like to look at the items that were purchased. Um, these are also um, home kits um, for kitchen supplies and as well as home care, as in self-care um, products, as well as um, just kind of day-to-day -day items. We um, will be delivering those this week to CPAC offices. Um, if you were wondering if any of you would be interested, in um, using your car and yourself to help bring in the items. So please let us know after worship today, um, myself or Pastor Rhonda, preferably Pastor Rhonda, who is coordinating this. I will be in and out of the office this week to um, rest and rejuvenate. Okay. Uh, so just a quick note on this. Um, I uh, have been speaking with the caseworker who's been uh, organizing with us. And one thing that I learned is that all of these items go uh, specifically toward families that have sought asylum. Uh, they've come here with nothing. And several of the families, uh, the mothers are expecting children. Uh, so your gift that you have given through your uh, donations, financial donations, uh, if you've made those, that's great, but it's also come out of the social uh, ministry fund that we have. Um, it's making a really big impact. They were completely overwhelmed, eyes wide open, just with hearts of thanks to receive the gifts that you have provided. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so our email and group communications are still um, being tricky. So I am working on that. Um, again, hopefully next week. I did send some emails out before I left and I have not received anything. So hopefully, um, I can work that out, but I hope you all enjoy what you do receive and can receive in the formats that I am sending. So do let us know, and I have heard um, some people will let me know to add them to that email list that I send out the PDF version um, until we figure out another solution. Just wanted to um, re remind you that, in fact, the John Lee Memorial is the next weekend, Saturday at 2 p.m here at Holy Trinity in the sanctuary, and then there will be a larger um, kind of reception at, in the fellowship hall downstairs to follow. Um, adult faith formation, that will be um, released soon, brought to you by Dr. Ron and myself. Um, opportunities abound this year for adults. It's not just faith formation for our youth. Um, so stay tuned, adults out there. There's stuff for you too to get similar communications and enrichment um, from our uh, adult leaders here. So if you would like to be on the email list for those communications, please let Pastor Rhonda know. But we will also be having it in a format on the TVs as well as brochures um, to kind of reach our whole audience. Additionally, children, youth, and family activities will be released on a similar timeline we do have a summer end extravaganza for those that have been kind of following along. That's through our Sky Ministries, and so that's the middle schoolers and the high schoolers who have been doing activities. Um, so that, I do know, it says all day on that August 24th because it's truly all day. It's, we're out on the water. We are um, going to the fair. We are doing all sorts of really wild and fun things to kind of just and then summer, on a very great note, to get us ready for the school year. We do have our back to school blessing um, that following Sunday, so I do hope that people can attend to get those um, backpack tags distributed to our children and youth, as well as just different events to kind of get us in the mindset to return to worship and school year and um, being together and experiencing life together. And then lastly, we do have our Luther Ralston beer. Um, so please make sure to mark your calendar. We are slowly accruing more and more baskets. I myself am making a New Orleans 
youth gathering basket. So we, um, I'm very excited for that and to share that with you all on that September 29th date. Um, we do and are making ESP bags in the narthex after worship, so please um, help with those as you are able. And then we do have um, coffee hour if you would like to talk to myself. I know Matthew had to leave, but if you would like to talk to myself about my travels, or if you have any other communications or would like to talk to your fellow congregation, uh, we will be in the next room for the coffee hour. Let's stand for our benediction song.